Hello everyone and welcome to this week's dinosaur lesson. Last week we looked at survival and how dinosaurs survived each other. They were constantly in threat of being eaten or squashed or something awful happening to them because <laughs> um, it's a bit like that around those times but this week we are looking at their environment and this is a lovely session because we're looking at where they lived what was it like then all those millions of years ago was it very different to now and um, we can definitely make up some dances about the environment that they lived in so that's what we're going to look at today but first of all let's do a warm-up we're going to do a nice musical statues warm up we're going to dance around and move however you want to move just be careful of your surroundings make sure you've got enough space okay and when i stop the music you're going to freeze in any position you like it can be very tall middle level or a low level have a think mix it up be as creative as you can ready here we go with the music <laughs> And freeze. There we go. Anything you like. It doesn't have to be dinosaur-like, but you can if you want to be dinosaur-like. Good. Ready? Here we go. Okay, freeze. Something different this time. Maybe a big tall shape if you've done a low one before. Hold, freeze. As still as a fossil. Here we go. Freeze. Okay. This is different. Good. Very still. Super, super still. <gasps> one more. You can see me playing the music, can't you? Ready? Go. Freeze. Last one. Make it really good. Really big. Really still. <gasps> well done. <sighs> Good, I hope your heart's going. I hope you're feeling a little bit warmer. What we're gonna do next is, we are going to look at the three areas that were around um, during the time of the dinosaurs. So we looked at these last time, and we looked at the Triassic period, which is about 200 million years ago. We looked at the Jurassic period, which is about 150 million years ago. And um, we looked at the Cretaceous period, which was about, sort of about 100 million years ago. Okay, and then we looked at this one, extinct, where all the dinosaurs became extinct. Okay, so those are the three areas we're going to look at. And do you remember Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and extinct? That means no longer they don't exist anymore. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna call out these areas, okay? And you have to run, do you remember? Or if you haven't got much space, you can just reach, if you like, to the place that I say that part um, of the timeline. So if I say Triassic, you're gonna run or put your hands to this side of the room. If I say Jurassic, you're gonna go all the way to the back of your space, okay? But remember, don't worry if you can't run, you might not have lots of room, you can just reach. Okay, Jurassic. If I say Cretaceous, you've got to run to this side, or put your hands there. And do you remember, if I say extinct, what do we do? We lie down on the floor, gone. Okay, very good. So, very quickly, let's go over it again. We go Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, extinct, gone, good. Now, because you're good at this, it's way too easy if I do them in order, so I'm gonna mix them all up. Okay, so you have to be listening and on your toes, ready to go to the right place. Ready? 
Jurassic. Go to the back of your space. Good. Triassic. Good. Go to the side. Well done. Extinct. All gone. Well done. And Cretaceous. <laughs> Go to the side. Well done. And Cretaceous. Good. Same place. Jurassic. <laughs> well done. Triassic. Good. Well done. Jurassic. Cretaceous. And extinct. Oh no. We're turning into fossils. And this is what happens, doesn't it? Good. Well done. Brilliant. Give your arm a shake. And the other arm a shake. And your leg a shake. And your other leg a shake. And give everything a shake and wiggle and wake up. Okay, good. Warming up. Here we go. Now we've looked at this before, but I want to recap over our four basic body shapes, which are pin, ball, wall, and twist. So you have pin, which is long, thin, narrow, and straight. And we make all these shapes with our bodies. We have ball, which is round, small, um, I can't read that one backwards. Here we go. Neat or tucked in and curved. Good. We also have wall, which is wide, broad, strong, enormous. Nice solid block there. And my favourite, twist, which is bendy, tangled and knotty. Ooh, lots of good dance words there. So we can do that with our bodies. So pin, ball, wall, twist and we in dance we can put these in any order and they make our dances look really really interesting so pinball wall twist i think we need to try some of these so come back into your space and i want you to show me a pin shape with your body so it can be very tall very narrow okay you can look up if you like i can touch my ceiling because i've got a low ceiling so but if you got a bit more space you could rise up on your toes so you're really tall, good. Very long, narrow, good. Can you show me a ball shape? So very small, tucked in, round, okay, very smooth. I think we talked about things like conkers before, tennis balls, everything that's round and tucked in. Good. Can you show me a wall shape? Really wide, enormous, broad which means wide. Okay, wide wall shape. We can make all these with our bodies, can't we? Good, stretch. Very nice, so that's our wall. And then we've got our twist shape, which we do a lot of in dance, don't we? So we go twisty. We can bring our legs in a twist. You can even twist your neck around. Good, oh, that's a super, super twisty one. Well done. Good, now the thing is, you can try these on different levels. So we've got pin, ball, wall, twist. Those are our shapes. But if we did everything on the same level, it would be a bit boring. So we've all done a pin. Great, narrow, tall, straight. Can we do a pin on a low level? Hmm, how can we do that? So let's lie on the floor maybe and make the same shape, but on a low level. And look, it looks completely different. Can you see? Well done, that's brilliant. So a low pin shape. Okay, our next one is a ball. Can we make, we were on the floor doing a low ball, but could we make a ball tucked in on a sort of middle start, middle level? So we're here, so tuck your head in. Okay, so you can see I'm still curved, I'm still small, but I'm just on a middle level. Woo, let's dance with this one. Good. Okay, our wall. Now we could have, we did a middle level wall, didn't we? But why don't we try a high wall? Maybe on our toes, woo! If we really stretched out, I can cheat and hold onto my ceiling. <laughs> there we go. Really high wall, good. So they can be all different levels. And twist, 
Now twist, you can do whatever you like. You could try a high, a middle, or a low level twist. So last time mine was quite low level. So I might try a sort of a high level twist, which is actually a bit harder. Good, whatever twist you like. Brilliant, pin, four, wall, twist. Great, Ooh, untwist yourself, shake everything out. I want to talk to you a bit more about some dinosaurs that I've discovered. So, I've been doing lots of research this week. Oh my goodness, there's so much to learn about dinosaurs. We could do many, many, many weeks on them. <laughs> but I found this. So, we're looking, about, we're looking today and talking about their environment. And one of the really interesting things is there were lots of different environments. So, where they lived and the temperature and all those kind of things. And this affected how they grew and how they evolved. So one of the places that they lived was swamps. And swamps are sort of wet, damp, muddy um, places. You can see here, very, quite sort of humid, so quite warm. And they loved swamps because they were very warm. It was very warm at the time or in the Cre uh, Cre Cretaceous period. There were no ice caps on the South Pole or, any, or either of the poles, the North Pole or the South Pole. So the whole world was a lot, lot warmer. And the temperature was about 35 degrees, which is like a very, very hot day here for us. So it's really, really warm. It was much, much warmer. So the, in areas like the swamps, which were very wet, there grew lots of amazing vegetation and trees and plants. And the dinosaurs loved this. So they used to eat everything and had lots and lots of vegetation to eat if you were one of those dinosaurs that ate vegetation okay so their swamps were a brilliant place for them to live but also they lived in rivers and woods and you can see here and dinosaurs were absolutely huge some of them do you remember this is the um brontosaurus that we looked at i think a few weeks ago didn't we and they were so big and they needed to cool off they needed to drink so these rivers were a fantastic place and they would walk down and travel down the rivers as well to get from place to place and they also lived in woods and as it was quite warm being about 35 degrees they could shelter in the woods here and they could stay there and hide from their predators that we looked at last week as well so there we have things like swamps, rivers and woods, and we also had huge deserts. Look at that, so very wide open plains. And apparently, from what I've read, they were, had sort of, they called them fields of deserts with sand dunes. So they had these huge hills that would just be covered in sand. So the dinosaurs would roam around these sand dunes as well. So there were lots and lots of different places for them to live. So the river and woods, there we go. And we also had the swamps here as well. So lots and lots of different places that they lived and grew and evolved. Okay, so those were the environments that they lived in. But something else that I found was that in these environments lived and grew creatures and plants, and that's what we're going to look at today. So one of the most amazing creatures that I discovered was called the leaf hopper. Why do you think it's called a leaf hopper? Exactly, because it looks like a leaf. Look at that camouflage. So looking, look, uh, looking and thinking about last week when we talked about survival, this would be a great little bug. It's very, very small, but it would have survived and not been eaten by birds and things because it looks like a leaf, so it would just hide away. Now the leaf hoppers were almost identical to, they, to how they are nowadays, 125 million years ago so they really haven't changed much at all they hop from leaf to leaf they could jump quite high and they obviously look like leaves so were really well camouflaged so we're going to look at moving like a leaf hopper i think that's going to be a really fun one to do now in the um these different periods that the uh, dinosaurs lived in and their environments were lots of ferns now the amazing thing is this was millions and millions of years ago but the ferns we have in our gardens are pretty similar to the ones that were around when the dinosaurs were alive. So we have all these ferns now, and this is what dinosaurs loved as well because they could eat them, the smaller ones could hide in them, can you see? And I don't know if you've ever seen a fern, but they actually start off as a ball and then they unfold 
and then they fold back up again. So that's a lovely movement that I thought we could do in our dance. So those are the ferns. And there were often lots of big crashing waterfalls and these were huge. And again, with all the rivers and the lakes around the dinosaur times, the dinosaurs would go into these and cool off and drink from. And they'd crash down from the cliffs into pools and into the lakes. So I thought, wonderful, we can definitely do some movement with the waterfalls. And the final ones were called ammonites. Now, ammonites were the oldest, one of the oldest creatures, and they lived about 240 million years ago. And they start in the sea. Can you see that? They lived in the warm, shallow waters, and they had a shell here, and they used to push water out through this shell, and it would like sort of push them along through the water, and that's how they would travel along. So they were a little bit like a squid, a little bit like an octopus, aren't they? And you can see this is a really familiar shape. This is a spiral shape. And that really looks like a fossil, doesn't it? And we have been really lucky enough to find fossils. And this is one of the shapes that we find, this imprint of these fossils. When all the animals died, they went into the ground and they just preserved, which means they didn't change. And they stayed like that. So we often see these kind of fossils, don't we, on beaches and things. Okay, and I'm very excited because I went to the beach a while ago and look what I found. Whoops, it's quite small actually. Can you see? There we go. This is an ammonite. It's a little fossil. Can you see the shape of it? So it's not very big at all. So isn't it amazing that this was this? So you can see it's almost that Let's have a look, it's almost like that way around, isn't it? So the animal would have been inside. So this is quite a small one, but you can see really clearly how old that is. And look at those prints. You can see the markings are still there. So that's really inspiring. We can definitely make dances out of this. So let's have another quick look. So we've got our leaf hopper and we have our beautiful ferns that fold in and fold out. We have our waterfalls which crash down and we have our ammonites. Okay, so I thought let's make a dance up about these using our pin, ball, wall, twist. So we can all bring our dance choreographic things together. And that's what's so brilliant about dance. So looking at the leaf hopper, they're quite long. Even though they're small, they're quite long. So I thought it's almost like a pin shape, isn't it? So if you get into your space, I thought we could start with a leaf hopper shape. So it's almost like they've got these lovely, strong sort of backs, haven't they? And I thought we could make that shape. So it's like a pin shape on a middle level, but then we could hop from side to side. So we go one, two, three, four, couldn't we? So make the long pin shape, and then we hop from side to side. And no one can see us because we look like a leaf, don't we? So we make a lovely pin shape, and then we go hop, 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 good. Our second one is our ball. So we've done our pin, our ball is the fern. So we're gonna go down into a ball shape and we're gonna unfold one arm, unfold another arm. And you can imagine you're holding a big round ball. Good. And then we're gonna fold back up again, around in our ball shape. So we're gonna unfold, unfold, and then we're gonna fold back up again. Good, in our, bur in our ball shape. So that's our fern. Our third one is our waterfall. And we're gonna be a big, wide wall of water. And we're gonna rise up, and we're gonna crash down. And then we're gonna rise up, a bit like a wave, and crash down again. So make me a big wave, lovely. Crash down, big wave, and crash down into the water. Exactly, so we are that lovely water falling down in our wide wall shape. And finally, we have our twisty shape, which of course is our ammonite. So, I want to start on the floor as they were all curled and twisted up. So this is our fourth body shape, the twist. Okay, and we're gonna make a sort of spiral shape coming up. Good, and my hand's gonna come around the back like a lovely twist as well. So we're gonna make a spiral shape and then we're gonna go back down again and twist around. So 
to make a lovely spiral shape. Come up, make a spiral shape like you've got a pencil on the end of your fingers and you're drawing the spiral and then coming in and then drawing the spiral and coming back out again. Good. So let's run quickly through those again. We have our pin, our leaf hopper. Hop, 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 hop. We have our fern, which is our ball, which we unfold from. And then we fold back up again. Unfold, because this is what they do all the time, ferns. They unfold and fold back up again. Good, we have our wall of water, the waterfall. Up, 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 wide wall, crash down. Wide wall, crash down. Good, and then we have our ammonite, which is our spiral. Twisty, twisty, all the way up. And twisty, twisty, all the way down. And we'll do each one twice like that. And then we're going to finish on the floor in our twisty ammonite position. Good, and that's the end of our dance. So if you want to, if I've gone a bit too fast, you can wind this back, okay? Have a look at all the shapes again, and then you can have a practice. Or if you want to try it with music, you can try that now. Let's go. Right, find the music, here we go. Okay, so we're going to start with our leaf hopper. Ready? on was that good okay we're gonna do it once more this time so it's in our heads now and it's in our bodies and this time can you make it even bigger so when we're doing our um, leaf hopper really stretch show me that lovely pin shape all the way down good when we're unfolding our arms really show me the unfolding and then the folding back up so we go from very big to very small that lovely ball shape the wall, make really big, really stretch your arms out and show me that spiral so I can see the spiral that you're drawing with your hand. Okay, let's try once more, here we go. environment can be very calm but we are going to do a little cool down as well just to finish so we're going to play that music but this time what we want to do is um, the unfolding of the fern in slow motion which is really hard to control so we're going to be really careful we're going to kind of start in a really small ball we're going to unfold our arms really slowly and then back in as a cool down to get our breath back have a bit of calmness, okay, to finish the lesson. So, let's try that one. Um, okay, this is a nice piece of music for you. Okay, so very small.
Well done. Oh, I hope you're feeling dinosaur calm and had a good lesson. Thank you so much. I bet you did some brilliant work. Keep going, keep practicing. You can wind back, have another go. Um, keep watching and there'll be more next week and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.